So you've run your test on K6. Now comes the hard part, the results. Here's how to make sense of the load test results on K6. Within your project, you can have many tests. I like to think of these tests as test scenarios where you're testing a single situation. For example, if you want to do a peak load test that might have a certain ramp up, a steady state, and then a ramp down of virtual users. Within that test, it's usually good practice to keep all of the executions similar, so meaning they would have the same script, except for maybe the number of virtual users or the duration. And that way, it's a more directly comparable set of tests. So to get to the test runs from this screen, you can either click on these bars or you can click on the title of the test here and you'll be taken to a list of all of those test runs with some details about them. So you have the number of virtual users and the duration of the test, the regions that you ran them in, date, and the response time. I use this like a test execution log. So you can put in notes here. Let's say the note is um, ran against prod with web pod replica equals three. That way, if you have notes for all of these tests, you'll be able to see at a glance, not just whether it passed or it failed, but maybe some environment configurations that you changed for that run in particular. If we click on any of these runs on a list, we'll be taken to the performance overview of the test run. This performance overview is a high level overview of the test as it runs. So when you start a test, you'll be able to see these results in real time, but you can also see them after the test. The performance overview shows the active virtual users, the response time, the request rate, and the failed requests rate. One of my favorite features of K6 is performance insights. Performance insights are algorithms that we develop that run against your result data. We alert you of common patterns related to performance issues, and then we also suggest some ways that you can continue to troubleshoot the issues. Here's a quick example of what performance insights look like when an issue has been detected. In this situation, high memory and high CPU utilization was detected on the load generator instance the test ran on. Clicking into it, you'll get some suggestions and explanation of the issue and a relevant graph. Now, I have a lot to say about performance insights, so we'll talk about that in the future, but for now, let's go back to our test. Scrolling down here, we see the results tabs. The HTTP tab is the one that's open by default, and it summarizes all of the HTTP requests included in this test. For each HTTP request, we're shown a lot of statistics about its performance. We see the HTTP status code that was returned in the response, how many times it was requested, and these metrics on its performance. These metrics refer to the response time of this HTTP request, and they give you an idea of the distribution of the response times. The minimum, average, and maximum are pretty self-explanatory, but let me talk about these three. The standard deviation is a measure of how much the response times differed from the average, so a higher standard deviation might help you detect outliers in your response times, or it might suggest application instability. The P95 and P99 columns are percentiles. A 95th percentile response time means that 95% of all of the requests had a response time of this value or lower. And the 99th percentile gives the same value but for 99% of the requests. One thing I like to do is sort this table by the 99th percentile response times. So you can sort by ascending or descending order. That way you can see quickly which requests had the highest response time. If you've used groups in your script, you can click this icon to view them in a hierarchical order. You can then expand and collapse these groups as necessary. This is handy if you're using groups as transactions, so that one transaction is a direct action that a user might take. The response time of a single resource on a page might not necessarily be too useful when you're trying to learn more about how the user experiences your application. So using the metrics at this level, on the level of the transaction, might be more meaningful. Clicking on any of these requests will also let you add this chart to the analysis if this request is particularly important. We'll get to the Analysis tab later. In the Thresholds tab, 
We can see the status of the thresholds that we've set and whether or not they were exceeded. I've got a threshold here that says that the 95th percentile response time should be less than 500 milliseconds. And clicking into it, I see that the test stayed well below that with a 95th percentile of four milliseconds. I can also add that chart to the analysis for later. Now let's go to the checks tab. Checks are different from thresholds in that they operate on the individual request level. So an example of a check on a request might be that it returns an HTTP 200. But if it doesn't, if there's one instance of a request that returns a 404, that might not really be that important. Thresholds operate on the test level. So you can say, well, it's not important if one instance returns a 404, but if 95% of them return a 404, then we've got a problem. Thresholds allow you to do things like stop the test if a threshold is exceeded. In the checks tab, you can also expand the check and see the passes and failures of that check throughout the test. And let's add that to the analysis as well. The analysis tab lets us explore the data in our load test. So this comparison chart comes by default, but you can also see that the charts that we've added previously have appeared here. So you can add charts to analysis from the other tabs or just go to analysis and add the new metrics as you wish. Here I want to add CPU utilization and I'll see the CPU usage throughout the test too. Heading back up here, let's click on the script tab and that'll show you the script that you ran on this test. This is great if you've forgotten exactly the settings that you used, especially if you have put scenarios or thresholds within the script. You can also copy the script from here or create another test using the same script. You'll also see execution logs here during the test if you've used one of these log functions in your script. So that's how to use K6 Cloud to understand the results of your load test. You'll be able to use this information along with logs, metrics, and traces on your own servers to understand how your application responded to the load.